next thing I like to do, once I've got all the strings in, I want to double check them all just by looking at each and every one of them before I pull it. Whenever I was working with somebody in the shop, I always wanted to go over it real well and uh, make sure of exactly where I was before I pulled it because I didn't want to hand them something that, you know, that, that could be a problem. We look good everywhere. So, you know, I want to give it a couple of pulls. I want to kind of make sure it's seated in. We'll tug on it just a little bit. That's now, a little there's short. Something else, there's something else, too, that, that I can do later, too, and that is I can actually, something cool that Hoyt came out with this year is uh, I can actually put a spiral stop from a spiral cam in here to change the light on Sure, I was going to bring that up in a bit. What, what we might actually be able to do is uh, we can affect the rotation of the cams just a little okay. and we can take your draw stop out that you're in a D module right now. We could take that D uh, stop out, put in a spiral cam, move it up one stop to C and you can actually hold more weight. It gives you a little more solid wall, hold a little more weight, cut down a little bit of the valley. You don't have quite as much you know, dead space there. Because sure. pretty much every dot shooter, every accuracy shooter is going to tell you, the more weight that you can comfortably hold at full draw mm -hmm. will keep your bones form body in line for the meaningful shots. And when I say meaningful shots, I don't mean just in the backyard practicing, but I mean more meaningful, like, like your buddy comes over and you're going to shoot him for cokes. Yeah. Or you're at the local tournament and it's the last shot. Or you're at the national championship and it's the, the final five target shoot down round or, or you're in Vegas and it's, and it's one arrow it left. It doesn't allow you to get lazy. It's a fact and you, it should help you use the right the right. And that's form. why the spirals are so popular because it's Absolutely. 65%, oh, yeah. sometimes 55% yeah. depending on how you can manipulate it. Yeah, you can run it from 55, clear up to 65 awesome. and it's, uh, it's just such a precise cam. That's why it seems to dominate you know, just yeah. about every class and every game. Okay. Yeah. So we're on, I pulled them, you know, everything stayed together, nothing flew off and swarped me to the ground or anything. The next thing I'm probably going to do is just get a rough estimate of timing. Okay. And I'm not going to put any loops on or anything yet. I'm just going to go and I'm going to get a hold of the riser at each end. I'm going to pull it as even as I can. If you, if you pull it off center, that could be bad. Um, I don't want to put a loop on it yet because some of these positions might shift. So I just sure. want to get a rough estimate of the timing. My experience of any type of cam and a half system, uh, I kind of like the top cam to swing around and hit its draw stop first, just ahead of the bottom. You know, sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, it should be plenty. Now that's pretty popular also with the PSE cams, correct? It, it's popular with just about any type of hybrid cam, okay. I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So Let's I'm going to go ahead and check that. I just wish I could find one place that has everything I need in archery. That too much to ask. Dad, just go to LancasterArchery.com. They have everything. Landon! I am just a baby. Just a baby. All right, let's go ahead and throw it up on a good, strong, stationary hook. Get a hold of each side of the riser and get it pretty, pretty even pressure. Yeah, I think you're dead. <laughs> now, first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to come down, and I'm looking at where the draw stop is going to just touch on the top. My hope is I can get it to where it'll just touch with about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch on the bottom. Now, unfortunately, these are absolutely dead even perfect time. I don't want that. Not on like a cam and a half system like this. I would like that top to hit just before the bottom. So, if this makes sense to the people at home, when strings come off and they're set and they're built and they have a certain amount of serving on them, that serving is perfect right where that's at. Any twist in or out of it has the possibility to open it up with any one strings. So my hope is that you know this is a, a serious control area right here. On this bus cable area where it's going to swing around and hit the draw stop peg, I really don't want to put many twists in or out of it. I'd like to try to work off the yoke. So I guess one of the first things I can do is just grab an arrow um, 
just something, anything. And I can check and see, you know, if I've got some kind of cam lean, maybe I'll end up working off a split yoke on my, on my draw length and my rotation. I have been engineered to be launched from today's high performance shooting equipment. I must withstand and deliver over 80 foot pounds of energy, shot after shot after shot. Powering through hide, flesh, and even bone. From the tournament trail to the trail head, when I return to my quiver, I'm still straight. I am Gold Tip, the toughest arrow you will ever shoot. So one of the first things I like to do is just grab an arrow, any arrow, and I'm going to put it up against the top cam, point facing down, and I'm going to lay it up against either, eye, either edge. And as you see here, when I lay it on that left edge, the point points to the right. If I lay it on this side, you can see the point points to the right of, of what I would call dead parallel. Stay there. Okay, uh, as an example. Over here and show how you're doing this against the okay. cam. Okay, I go right against the cam, yep. and as you see, the point veers off to the right of parallel of the string. In theory, I would want it parallel, but instead it's pointing off to the right. So since point right, that means I would tighten the right yoke. Okay. Tighten the right yoke. And when you say tighten the right yoke, you're not going to go 60 twists. No. <laughs> so now we've got just a little bit of pressure on the press. I'm going to pop that yoke off and a little can go a long way. So I want to just tighten it up. Uh, let me see here, which direction I'm going. Half, one, half, two. I put two full twists in it. That's all that I did. Just to see if I could get it a little straighter and if it's going to help my optimum rotation for tune and for forgiveness, which again, on a cam and half system, I like that top cam to swing around and hit the draw stop peg just about an eighth before the bottom. Now, why did you put two in that and none in the left and, and take none out of the left side? Well, because we laid our string down and, or our arrow down the string. And when we did, we saw that the arrow veered off to the right in both directions. So the point of the arrow went to the right that tells me which side to tighten. So in theory, I could take out of this side, okay. but in this particular case, our bottom cam was swinging around a little too fast also. So if I were to go ahead and tighten this side, I will slow that into the cam up, if that makes sense. All right, so we just tightened up the right side of the yoke to try to help for some of the cam lean. I'm gonna just give it a quick pull and just see kind of what it looks like leaning over it. And if you look at my shooting string, coming off of the wheel, uh, that concerns me a little bit. That shows me that the right side could still use some twists. I'm betting when I let it up and lay an arrow down it, the point of the arrow will still be leaning just slightly right. That's my guess. And if I lay an arrow down either side of the cam, if I lay it down either side of the cam, sure enough, it's still slightly right. It's not exactly parallel to the string where I'd like it. And if I lay it on the, on the module side, sure enough, it leans away from the string. So I still need to go a little tighter on that right side. You all remember that? beautiful orange one right there, don't you? Those that shot with us on the ASA Pro-Am circuit. Yep, that was Papa Junkies. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one again. It feels better. Okay, so now if a person aligns the shooting string coming off the main track of the cam, it is pretty darn straight. So I bet that we're really close to where we need to be now. If I throw, a, if I throw an arrow down it, I'm going to expect it to be very close to parallel to the shooting string. That is extremely close to parallel to the shooting string. That's what I'm looking for. Now that I have the balance on my wheels where I want them, I can go ahead and fine tune that rotation to make sure that top cam swings around and hits the draw stop just ahead of the bottom.
Now I want to make sure that I'm just touching it, not digging into it. So right about right about there I'm touching it. When I check my bottom cam, I'm off of it about a 32nd of an inch. That's really close. That's close. I might go one more twist in the actual um, control cable itself, and I think we'll be good to go. We'll be able to start. We'll be able to start bolting our toys on and get into the fun part. See. Okay. Roll. All right. I want to get even about where I'm going to have my loop. So I got that position. I'm going to give it an even pull, and I'm going to watch that top draw stop. I'm going to watch it to where it just comes down and touches the cable. And when I make sure I'm just into it, which is right about there, I hope to have about an eighth of an inch. And sure enough, on the bottom, I've got about an eighth of an inch. So I'm hoping that that's a good starting point. Not to say that we can't adjust it, you know, just a, a hair of a twist one way or the other, but that should be a good starting spot. We're now to the point we can start bolting our toys on the bow.